Have you ever had good intentions, but things got all messed up? Gotten into a difficult situation and attempted to, to do everything in your power to get out of it? We're going to look at the possibilities of what you could or should do. This is part of my life series where I parallel things in the vineyard, winery, and things related to wine uh, with different aspects of life. In this episode, we'll look at the correlation between uh, the vineyard and how to embrace the richness of life's difficult times. Tennessee and Tawar holds an important parallel for our lives. It has some very powerful insights, particularly in today's environment. If this somehow resonates with you, I'd appreciate letting me know uh, in the comments below and subscribe. Uh, the subscription is actually free. Also, ring the little bell and best of all, if it was helpful, share this with a friend. So friends of mine were in the process of moving and were giving away furniture, paintings, clothes, all sorts of home and kitchen paraphernalia. Uh, they were downsizing from a large home in the suburbs to a smaller condo uh, downtown and invited friends and family over just to, to take whatever they wanted. Uh, his brother, Tom, had come up from Tennessee to help with the move and uh, take a trailer load of, of stuff back with him. During the course of the day, Tom found out that I was involved with wine. As we were taking a break, Tom talked about his small vineyard in Tennessee. Uh, he indicated he had three or four years of growing grapes and he began to make wine. He's been making wine for several years and admitted, Man, you know, it's really not that good. Uh, he was hoping uh, I could have some suggestions for him. I said it was virtually impossible to know without paying him a visit and making an assessment of the, the vineyard, his uh, vineyard techniques, the production and aging process, and his overall operation. But I said, Tom, I can tell you up front, when you boil it down, it really is pretty simple. There are three basic reasons why uh, you're not producing good wine. The terroir, the analogist, or both. <laughs> Tom laughed and said, what the heck did you just say? And I said, well, the analogist is the winemaker. Uh, the terroir is, among other things, the vineyard, uh, the vineyard environment, which uh, primarily includes the climate, weather, soil, topography, or the layout of the land and among other things the sun hours uh, that the land gets. All this has an impact on how well the vines grow, how the grapes develop and which grapes are best suited for that particular vineyard, his vineyard. Tom indicated that he was doing a lot of reading from the pros and uh, from the University of California in Davis. Uh, he was learning how to make wine from some of the top experts in the world and was following their process very closely. You know, it sounded like he was doing all the right stuff. I affirmed what he was doing, his studying the elements in making wine and encouraged him by citing an example of two totally inexperienced winemakers in eastern Washington and northeastern Oregon that bought some land, planted some vines, and five years later, after a ton of research and hard work, from their very first harvest, they had made a 100-point world-class Syrah and a 90-point red blend. These guys were a couple of mathematicians and techno geeks and told everybody that would listen to them that they made their wine by the numbers. <laughs> they made their wine by the book. Now, I said to Tom, if you're as diligent as these guys were and as you say you are, yet the wine is still not very good, then the likelihood is that your problem may be in the vineyard. His problem may not be making the wine, but in growing the grapes. Either what you're doing in the vineyard or the vineyard itself. Now I asked Tom a bunch of questions. <laughs> no pun intended. You get a bunch in wine. Uh, which revolved around the terroir and uh, what he was doing in the vineyard. Uh, the upshot was I asked Tom to tell me all about his property its key topographical features, and where he had had the vines planted. He was meticulous in the property description. 
you could tell this guy absolutely loved his land. Dang, I started thinking, well, maybe I don't need to, to go pay him a visit after all. Well, anyhow, uh, he went on to say he had selected the best and most fertile, richest plot of land on the valley floor. It's surrounded by trees to minimize the amount of wind on the vines. He underscored that the vines are doing extremely well. They were growing like crazy, and he had more grapes than he knew what to do with. Now, after listening to Tom's explanation, I told him that most grapes don't like wet feet, which means they don't like to get too much water. But the valley floor in that particular location may be permitting the vines to get too much water, which is not good for the vines. Also, the trees surrounding his vines to protect him may be causing some problems. His vines may need a better or the correct exposure to the sun. They were doing too well. He needed to, to reduce their vigor just a little bit. But because the ground was so fertile, his vines were growing too many cordons or branches and producing too many bunches of grapes. He needed to force the vines' energy into fewer grapes. That would create a more flavorful grape and greater character. Now in all likelihood the best thing for him to do was to either aggressively prune and reduce the number of cordons or cull the grapes uh, and reduce the number of grape bunches. Uh, this is a, a very labor-intensive process or actually uh, another option was he could dig up the vines and plant them someplace else. You know I told him my hunch without taking soil samples is to consider transplanting the vines into that rocky, well-drained soil that he had talked about a little bit earlier. That spot on the, the southwest facing hill above the valley floor. Tom, your land is too fertile, plus your vines are not getting enough correct sun exposure. The roots of your vines need to struggle to get to the deep water. You're making it way too easy for the vines to grow. You got too many grapes holding too much water and you're ending up with flabby wine. Now I went on to say, Tom, the greater the struggle, the greater the character of your wine. The thing you need to keep in mind is if planted in the right spot, the vines will struggle, but the fruit will be great. But if not planted in the right spot, you need to be vigilant in tending your vines every single day and in the right way. That's if you want to have a chance of having really good fruit. Either way, Tom had to do a lot of work. Vines and the resulting wine are like people. Me, you, our kids. If we have too much of what is commonly viewed as a good thing, and it's something we don't have to work and struggle for, we end up with flabby wine that lacks character and <laughs> low self-esteem. You know, I understand Tom invested the time, energy, and expenses in transferring many of his vines to that better place. Oh, and it seemed to be working out for him. Much better wine. Allow me to ask several questions. Keep in mind, I'm not suggesting that you deliberately put yourself into a difficult situation, but are you sheltering or protecting yourself, your loved ones? your children from living through things, the kind of things that develop character, deep character. I know from experience that's a natural temptation, but is it better to avoid difficult situations at all costs, pretending they don't exist, or to learn to encounter, embrace, and overcome difficult situations? You know, as the good book guides us, it says, rejoice in your struggles because we know that struggle produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Like a vine that needs pruning or transplanting, caring for ourselves is hard work. We can't do that kind of work all alone. Are you willing to ask someone for assistance? As a word of advice, I recommend being open to help, but also being selective in who you go to. What are the characteristics, or actually better, What's the character of those you go to for assistance and counsel? I really want to encourage you, don't just let these questions go in one ear and out the other. 
take a moment to, to pause the video and really think about these ideas. Are you willing to ask for help? Are you willing to face your struggles head on rather than having an idealistic view of your situation? And actually, here's the real question. What are some of the things that you can change to create a better atmosphere for your deeper growth? Well, there you have it. Tom, Tennessee, and Tawar. The greater the struggle, the greater the character. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if this somehow resonated with you, subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified when I post other videos just like this. Also, if you believe this might help a friend, share this video with them. I'm sure they'd really appreciate it. Until later, cheers.